Hello again, this is Laura Alford. Uh, today I've got a quick example on calculating GM that I hope will be kind of useful for you. So if you recall, we're talking about stability and one of the things we were trying to figure out is what is GM of the ship, right? So going back to this picture here, we've got these five lengths that we've been talking about when using trying to calculate stability for our ships. Uh, GM is the metacentric height, KG is the vertical center of gravity, VM, metacentric radius, KB is the vertical center of buoyancy. And then the total distance between the keel, the bottom of the ship, and M, which is the metacenter, we creatively call KM. Um, going back to initial transverse stability, uh, we're looking at GZ and then uh, the weight of the ship times GZ, which is the riding moment, right? If the riding moment is positive, that means that the ship will right itself if it's tipped over a small bit. For small angles uh, here, like less than six degrees, you can estimate GZ by GM times the sine of the heel angle. So if we can figure out GM, then we can figure out what the initial stability of our ship is, which is a good thing. Um, so again, going back to calculating uh, GM, KB, BM, and KM all depend on the shape of your hull. And again, the shape of a hull can be very complicated, so you usually get these from a computer program where it gives you the ship's hydrostatics curves, because remember, it depends on draft and, and trim and all that. Um, KG and GM depend on the loading of your ship. So you calculate KG using the weights and moments calculation, and then once you have KM and KG, you just subtract the two and you get GM. No. Remember that if GM is positive, then the ship is stable. If GM is zero, then it's neutrally stable, which means if you tip it over a little bit, it will just stay there. And then if GM is negative, then the ship is uh, initially unstable, and that's what we would like to try and avoid. So here's a quick example. Uh, we've got a, a block here. It's just a solid block. Uh, its density is half that of water, which means that it will float half in the water and half out of the water. It's got a length of 10 meters, a depth of 2 meters, beam of 4 meters, and then a draft of 1 meter. So to evaluate this block's initial transfer stability, we're going to calculate its GM. Right. Um, for this particular block, right, it's floating, again, floating half in the water and half out of the water. Um, the, because it's uniform density, the center of gravity is in the middle of the block. So kg is just the depth divided by 2. In this case, kg is equal to 1 meter. For the center of buoyancy, to calculate kb, again, it's floating half into the water, half out of the water. It's uniform shape with this rectangular shape. So kb is just the draft divided by 2. So in this case, kb is 0 0.5 meters. Okay. For this rectangular hull, we can actually calculate the inertia of the uh, water plane area. In this case, it's the length of the block times the beam cubed divided by 12. Um, so you calculate this, you get the uh, inertia there is 53.33 meters to the fourth. The underwater volume is just the length times the beam times the draft. So in this case, it's 40 meters cubed. Um, BM is just the inertia divided by the underwater volume. So we get 1.33 meters. Um, plug all those numbers that we just calculated into the GM equation, and you get a GM of 0 0.83 meters. GM is positive, so this block is stable. All right. Now take that same block, turn it on its side, so now it's a tall block, and we're gonna do the same thing, right? The numbers are, are, the dimensions are all the same, but because it's oriented differently, we may get a different answer. So. All right, again, kg is gonna be in the center of the block, but this time with the different orientation, it, the depth is now four meters, so depth divided by two is two meters. A kb now is the draft divided by two, in this case it's one meter. Um, again, doing the same thing, the, um, the inertia here you can get is L times beam cubed divided by 12, but now the beam is only 2 meters. So you see that the inertia here is much less, it's only 6 and 2 thirds here. Um, underwater volume is the same block, it's still floating half in and out of the water, so the underwater volume is the same. So you can really see the difference on how the orientation of this block is affecting, going to affect BM here. So plug in those numbers for BM, we now get BM of 0 0.17 meters, this is a big difference than what we had before, and GM is now equal to minus 0 0.83 meters. So GM is negative, so the block is unstable, which we could have guessed right, if we went back and did the little trick where you take the blocks and rotate a little bit and sort of see where it's going to go. We could have guessed that the ship was unstable, but now using GM we have a way to quantify that. Um, quick example here for an actual ship. Right? An actual ship is not a block. You can't really easily calculate its uh, inertia of the water plane area there. Um, so, but same, th same sort of thing. We're going to take the ship, evaluate its initial transfer stability by calculating its GM. 
For a ship of any kind, you can always use this equation. Gm is equal to Km minus Kg. Remember, Km you're going to get from hydrostatics, and Kg you're going to get from the loading conditions. So, somebody comes along, and they tell you, that for this loading condition, Kg was 7.5 meters. You say, okay, I have Kg. So then you go to the, loading, the hydrostatics table, sorry, for the ship. You go find the draft. Here's a simplified version of one. Uh, draft is 8 meters. Read across and find where the transverse Km is. In this case, it's 10.2 meters. So you pluck that number out, plug it into our equation, and Gm is equal to 2.7 meters. Gm is positive, so the ship is stable. So these are just a couple of really quick examples on how to do Gm. Hopefully they help. Um, as always, thank you for watching.